This ClickView enablement module will provide you with the next level of troubleshooting when it comes to ClickView server log files. This document will cover some of the most common issues related to errors, failures, or odd behavior in relation to the ClickView server, as well as how to locate and read the log files. Let's begin by opening the ClickView Management Console. When you notice odd behavior or something going wrong, the log files are a great place to start looking for a clue. Each of the ClickView services produce logging, so in general, understanding of the issue and how the services communicate with each other is necessary in order to know which log is useful for which type of problem. Now to manage the ClickView services, you need to open up the Windows Services and scroll down to the ClickView Services. From this list, I will tell you which ClickView Service services are producing logs. We have ClickView Server, ClickView Management Service, ClickView Distribution Service, ClickView Directory Service Connector, and ClickView Web Server. Now the only exception to producing logs is the ClickView Settings Service. If you have this service active and running, which is related to IIS, you will need to access the IIS Manager to retrieve the IIS logs. Now, when it comes to the distribution service logs, we described distribution logs in a prior module, so we will not be discussing them in this module. Now, let's navigate back to the ClickView Management Console to see where we configure logging for each service I had mentioned. Go to the System tab and then the Setup tab. There you will find the management services for each service. Let's begin with the ClickView Server service by clicking on the QVS icon. This service has the most configurable logging options possible. You can enable or disable different types of logging. There are session, performance, event, and audit logging. It is also possible to choose which verbosity to use for the ClickView Server Service event log. To produce meaningful information and not only critical or error messages, it is necessary to set the verbosity to high. Finally, confirm the location of the log file. Default location is c colon backslash program data backslash clicktech backslash clickview server. In our environment, we are locating it here. Next, we want to take a closer look at the location of the four different logs produced by clickview server. So, let's open up event log to see what's inside there. The first point to make is the log file is tab separated, just like the other logs produced by the clickview server. As a side note, tab separated files are very suitable for analyzing with the clickview application. The second point to make here is the header on the top row explains what each column contains. Let's start on the left side. The server started header shows the date and timestamp when the ClickView server was started. This is useful in order to see how long the service has been running. Next is the timestamp header, showing the date and time the line was printed to the log. Skipping to the fifth column labeled severity, this column tells us what type of message was given, like informational, warning, or error. Only error level messages will be produced if the verbosity is set to default low. That is why it is usually advisable to change the log verbosity to high during troubleshooting times. The last column called message contains the actual log message telling you what had happened. So what should you look for in the ClickView server event log? Usually it is a good idea to first know the symptom of the problem you are investigating and the time of the symptom. With that information, you can open up the event log and look at what type of events are happening around that time and see if you can find anything that explains the symptom. A common problem you may see is that there's not enough memory available on the server. If that's the case, you will sometimes, but not always, see warnings in the QVS event logs about virtual memory running low. Here's an example. Listed as a warning, the message states, working set, virtual memory is growing beyond parameters. Now, the reason you will not always see these warnings is if another service or process uses up the available memory. In that case, the ClickView service will not detect this. The QVS assumes that it always has the amount of memory that is available on the server and will use it according to how the working set limits are configured in the QMC. So, there could be a problem with the memory shortage even though no warnings or errors are in the QVS log. If there are memory warnings in the event log, then there is a memory problem which needs to be addressed by either getting more memory or by optimizing the ClickView document server to use less memory. If there are no memory errors but you suspect memory is an issue, it is usually better to ensure Windows own performance monitoring as it will give you an objective view on how much resources are being used. 
Here's another area to check in the event log. If you have a problem with QVS crashing and you suspect the QVS restarted itself, then it is useful to start with the left column, which tells you the timestamp of the last startup. The next step is to find the exact startup time in the second column called timestamps, and then see which event led up to the restart. For example, was a particular document being loaded in memory, or were the memory warnings? Now, moving on to another log produced by QVS. The log is again tab separated just like the event log. It contains a log entry for every session. The important thing here to know is that a log line is only produced at the time a session is closed. Here are three action types that will cause a line entry into the session log. Number one is when a client is left idle and the session timeout has exceeded. This message is seen for both AJAX and IE plugin. Number two is when an IE plugin client is closed or the AJAX is closed with the closed X button in the upper right corner of the application window. This will immediately close the session. However, a common source of misunderstanding is for the session open with an AJAX client. The session does not get closed directly when closing the web browser. The session will remain open until the idle timeout is reached, which is 30 minutes by default. Number three is when a user is logged into the access point on one PC using their credentials to view an application. Then they log into the same access point using their same credentials from a different PC and open the same application. The first PC session will get killed and a log entry will be entered into the log saying, killed because named user cal was needed for another client. You should also be aware that the session log also contains information about which client was used, which version of the client, and the IP address of the client. Moving on to another log produced by QVS is the audit log. This logging is not produced by default, but has to be enabled from the QMC. If enabled, it will contain information about which user opens a particular document, which sheet was opened by that user, and which selections were made. This is in some case useful for troubleshooting purposes. For example, if it is suspected that a particular sequence of events led to a crash or error or failed chart load, then the audit log can be used to verify that and replicate the issue. The last log to look at by QVS is the performance log. This log contains a lot of statistics about the performance of ClickView Server. While all of these would be useful for monitoring and troubleshooting purposes, the following fields I'm about to talk about would be a good starting point. As a reminder, for complex logs with numerous columns, it's better to import the logs into Microsoft Excel for a clear layout. Let's begin. The column called exe version contains the version of the QVS. This is useful to verify which exact version was running at a particular time in case there has been an upgrade or a patch installed. The fifth column called entry type can be used to see when the QVS was stopped and started. When restarting QVS, this field will say server shutting down. And then on the next line, you'll see server starting. If you see a line server starting, which was not preceded by the line server shutting down, then it indicates that the QVS was not shut down orderly, possibly a crash. The fourth column from the right, or endpoint, shows the allocated virtual memory, called VM allocated in megabytes. This column is useful to keep an eye on if there has been an unexplained problem. For example, if you know that the server machine is running 64 gigabytes of physical memory, and 30 gigabytes is used by the OS and other software, then there should be 34 gigabytes left. Of course, it is not good to let QVS even run close to 34 gigabytes. So, in this case, if the column shows that QVS has allocated most of the remaining 34 gigabytes, then Windows is most likely to use the page file heavily, which will have a huge effect on the performance. This column will give you a good start, but to get more accurate stats of the resources available, it is usually better to use the Windows Performance Monitor. Next, let's take a closer look at the log produced by the ClickView Management Service. The log level is set by selecting the Management Service in the QMC under the General tab. Normal logging is set by default. During your troubleshooting time, you can set the level to Debug Logging. But remember to change it back to normal when you're finished to reduce the log file size.
The management service normally produces a small amount of logging, but it would be the first place to look if there was a problem with starting the management service. Since the management service communicates with all the other services, it may be useful for troubleshooting issues with connectivity from management services towards the other services. The next log to look at is the directory service connector. The log level can be set in a similar way that the other services are. Normal logging is usually enough. The directory service connector log will show information about the connection to the data source that are configured and information about resolving groups. It is a good source of information if there is a connection problem to one of your data sources. In case of a connection failure, it will show the error message associated with the failure or the error originated from the remote system. Finally, we take a look at the web server logs. Configured in a similar way as before on the general tab of the web server configuration. Now, the web server receives requests for web resources from the client browsers. Requests are logged so that it is possible to see which resource, like JavaScript files, CSS style sheets, and others, are being served by the web server. These will show up as, for example, request received post or request received get. In order to service these requests from the client, the web server communicates with the backend service, the directory service connector, and ClickView service. The web server log will show any errors related to the communication with the services in the backend. For example, before being able to display the list of documents on the access point, the web server sends a get admin doc list for user request to the back end in order to find out which document the user is entitled to see. This request and the response gets logged into the web server log. As a reminder, when you run into errors, failures, or odd behaviors, a great way to troubleshoot these issues are to become familiar with the log files and how they're structured, along with the locations of these log files. A few additional tools and resources you can use include the ClickView Help menu. Also, you can view the release notes, reference manuals, article knowledge base, and Click Community for more help.